let's move on to a very very important reaction this reaction is called as hoffman bromamide or they also call it as hoffman degradation reaction now what happens in this hoffman bromamide reaction or hoffman degradation reaction is we start with a amide we add koh base to this amide and we also add bromine to this amide when we do this and the, when the reaction is complete we get a amine and this c double bond o goes to carbonate to form potassium carbonate and just to balance the reaction you also get potassium bromide you also get water molecules and to balance it this is how you will balance it the reaction is balanced but what we are concerned with is this amide this reagent i'm sorry this is br2 this is bromine and this amine rest all are not of our concern what we i am concerned what you should be considered is what is the reaction the reaction is hoffman bromide what is the substrate substrate is this amide what is the reagent you the reagent is base and a bromine and the product is amine so the way to write the product is remove this carbonyl group and attach this r and ns2 that will result in amine fine so uh before moving the into the mechanism because mechanism is important we'll see the mechanism but in order to you should quickly learn how to write the final product so quickly let's have some practice to write the product of this reaction suppose i add koh and br2 now looking at koh and br2 the first thing that should clench into your mind is to identify this reaction reactions you have to identify looking at the reagents now this reagent is koh br2 now this particular reagent can do many things but if you are having an amide this particular reagent becomes a reagent for hoffman bromamide because hoffman bromamide will be carried out on a amide and hoffman bromamide will have a reagent koh br2 so you have to look two things together if this is a amide and if this is koh br2 then this reaction is got to be hoffman bromamide and then you know how to write the product of hoffman bromamide you remove this c double bond o and then you add this ns2 into this ch2 so you will get ethanamide fine now even if the r part is a aromatic ring like this and if you're still having the base and br2 then the reaction is still hoffman bromide and the product the rule to write the product will still remain the same you just remove the c double bond o and reduce that amide to amine that's how you will write the product of hoffman bromamide fine now let's see how the mechanism of this reaction is all right so you start with our amide we have taken a base and you have taken bromine so start thinking what's going to happen bromine is neutral stable bulky that's not going to do anything this is neutral this is not going to do anything base is someone who's going to do anything so hydroxide ion is the one that's going to initiate the reaction hydroxide ion is a base so what base does base abstracts hydrogen from where from the position from where if hydrogen is released whatever is left out is stable so that's the position here nitrogen is electronegative negative charge on nitrogen will be stable so the first step of the reaction will be acid base reaction hydrogen will be abstracted from nitrogen this base comes abstracts hydrogen and a anion like this will be generated now the first step 
and the second step and the third step of this reaction is similar to that of halophone reaction. I'm assuming that you have studied the chapter carbonyl compound and I'm also assuming that you have studied halophone reaction there. So if you recall halophone reaction, what happened in halophone reaction was you had to take, you took group like this, methyl group on one side of C double bond O and there we took a base NOH or KOH, does not matter and we took iodine. So the first step there was identical to the first step here with the difference that the hydrogen was abstracted from carbon. Here you abstracted hydrogen from nitrogen. This kind of an ion was genera generated there as well. If you recall further, what happened there was this iodine was attacked by this C minus and one iodine was attached to this carbon. So in the next step, one iodine was replaced one hydrogen on this carbon like this. Now the same step is going to repeat here. You are taking, you have taken here a bromine. Now this nitrogen is going to attack bromine. From the front, one bromide ion, bromide ion is going to come out. So there will be a bond between nitrogen and bromine and a hydrogen will be replaced by bromine like this. This is very similar to this. Now if you remember the second step what happened here, base came again and abstracted this hydrogen again. Because now the inductive effect, the minus I effect of iodine is operating and the hydrogen has become more acidic. The same thing will operate here as well. The base will come and abstract that hydrogen from nitrogen. This is the third step. And nitrogen will gain a negative charge here once again. If you remember in halophorm reaction when this kind of situation was created then again for the next time this negative ion attacked this iodine and two iodine got attached on this carbon and this was repeated for the third time and three iodine got attached to this carbon. That's how the reaction went. Now here there's a difference. The first, second, third steps are similar. The fourth step will be different. Now in this case what happens, we have also heated the reaction. Now generally with the reagent they will not show heat but there is an innate understanding that when you are carrying out haloform Hoffman bromamide reaction then heat has to be given because a very highly unstable intermediate is going to be formed here. Now this reaction involves heat although we do not mention it but there is an understanding that this reaction involves heat. Why? You will understand now. Now in this case what happens there's a lots of electron clouding here there's a negative the, the the lone pair of bromine there are three lone pairs on bromine the nitrogen also has a lone pair and it also has a negative charge so there are five pairs of electron in a small region so there's a high electronic repulsion happening around here and if you are heating it then on heating then the electron gets to excited state and they can move from one orbital to another very fast. So this bromine will try and reduce the repulsion. It will try to move out of this space. When it goes away, then it is relieved by the repulsion that was happening with the two lone pairs on this nitrogen. So what happens is this bromine is going to come out. Fine. When this bromine comes out, then the repulsion is reduced. But when this bromine comes out, it takes away the electron and comes out as bromide ion. Now when this comes out, look what will happen. This nitrogen is making two bonds. Fine. When this electron, when this, this bromine goes away, taking away the electrons of this bond, nitrogen will be making only one bond. So nitrogen and there will be a one negative charge and that negative charge will be neutralized because a positive charge will develop because of removal of this electron. So the situation would be like this. This nitrogen is neutral. Plus minus is neutralized. It has a lone pair. But there are two electrons, unpaired electrons left out because it makes three bonds. Now it's making only one bond. The two electrons that were involved in making a bond is now in the form of unpaired electron. It's like this. So nitrogen presently is devoid of two electron because when it gets two electron it makes two bond. So it's not making two bond. So it is devoid of two electron. Fine. So 
this is called nitrine when carbon is devoid of its two electron it's called carbene and we studied carbene when we studied carbonyl compound when we studied the reaction rimer timon reaction in that if you remember carbon is making two bond so the two electrons are left out unpaired like this so it is also devoid of two electron because it is making two bond less because it, it carbon makes four bond so when it has two electron less but it is neutral it doesn't have any charge because there is no excess of electron and its own electron has not been taken out so it doesn't develop any charge but it is still divide of two electron to complete its octet it is carbene similarly nitrogen here is uncharged because whatever electron it has it has its own electron and its own electron hasn't been taken out so it is neutral and it is divide of two electrons so this kind of intermediate is called nitrine fine that's the difference the reason here it doesn't take place this kind of step do not take place because carbene is not formed a because we don't heat it and b because the electronic repulsion is not as great as it is here because carbon doesn't have a lone pair nitrogen does have a lone pair we have taken iodine here and iodine is a greater bigger atom so these electrons are more diffuse than bromine so in that this case iodine causes less repulsion to this negative charge that's one reason reason number 2 carbon doesn't have a lone pair as of nitrogen so these two reasons cumulatively increase the repulsion here and there's a more chance of removal of bromine if you heat it if you don't heat it this will not occur because nitrine is highly unstable this kind of intermediate is not formed if you don't heat the system so heat is required nevertheless if you have a nitrine formed here nitrine will not be formed as i have drawn the structure this kind of structure will not exist like this because nitrogen is a electronegative atom and electronegative atom do not entertain electron deficiency so the say for the sake of understanding i have drawn it separately but it will not exist in this form what will happen is as uh, we had seen in the case of beckman's rearrangement this r group migrates to nitrogen so look carefully what will happen here is when this r group migrates to nitrogen this r and this nitrogen forms a bond but this carbon will be devoid of one bond so this carbon wants to make a wants to make a bond with some other atom now nitrogen is 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 having a deficiency of two bonds so one bond def deficient deficiency def deficiency of one bond will be fulfilled by this r group but there's a deficiency of the second bond so that deficiency will be fulfilled by this carbon because this carbon has broken a bond with this r for the sake of understanding let's break this bond like this r dot and c dot now see if this r dot comes and form a bond with this n what happens fine but is still this nitrogen still has one unpaired electron and this carbon has developed one unpaired electron like this fine so there will be a bond formation between this nitrogen and this carbon so what we are going to get is this carbon nitrogen double bond there is already a bond between them so if you rearrange it like this then nobody has a deficiency of electron all have its octet filled now something happened you have deficiency of two electrons on one atom and after rearrangement no one has deficiency that's the beauty because you have rearranged it like this fine now this is called isocyanate now there's a isocyanate formation this is very important from all these steps we have reached to isocyanate fine now the story will begin from isocyanate now can i rub this on this isocyanate cyanate because the system is basic and this carbon will be having a very high plus charge polarity because there are two electronegative atoms pulling electrons from both the sides so this carbon will be attacked by this base and this is what you are going to have fine there will be resonance between oxygen and this double bond 
if you draw the resonating structure you will get this fine negative charge from oxygen will jump to nitrogen like this now we have had this discussion before the when charge is on two sides the side which is more unstable that side goes for reaction oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen nitrogen the, ne ne the negative charge on nitrogen is less stable than oxygen. So this is a reacting site. So there will be an intramolecular acid base reaction. And this hydrogen will jump from oxygen to nitrogen. Intramolecular acid base reaction. Like this. Now since you are heating the system already and you can see there's a good living group, almost it has been formed. Now, if that this carbon develops a plus charge, then this plus and this O minus will form a double bond. And this living group will come out. If this carbon forms a plus charge, sorry, this plus charge will vanish. When hydrogen has come, this plus charge will go away because this H plus N minus will form a bond. And when you're breaking this bond such that this carbon is generating a plus charge, this nitrogen will develop a minus charge. So from this side, CO2 is going to come out and from this side, this anion is going to come 